Now let's start this. <clears throat> okay. So in Blender, let's say I wanted to make something like a log or a stick or something along those lines. Um, one of the things that I'm going to have to, or that I'm going to do here, is, is actually um, pretty simple. And that is, first off, I'm just going to delete this object. So hopefully you've learned by now, X is our delete, okay? And you delete that. And whenever we um, change an object or add an object, it's always going to start wherever this crosshair is. And you can move this crosshair around to anywhere you want it to be in order to um, add an object wherever you might want it to be added. But I, it's just easier, especially for this application when you're making objects for a game, and each object kind of has its own separate you're going to import them. It's each going to be a separate file. You're not like making an animation. It's usually, you don't have to worry about that. So I'm just going to hit Shift A, which is the same thing as going to the Add menu here. Let's make this full screen. So I can go Add, or I can just hit Shift A right here. And I'm just going to add a simple, um, a simple circle. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the S key to scale that down to about what I'm thinking here. And then I'm hit, going to tab in to edit mode by just hitting the tab key, okay? Or you can go down here. And I'm going to then extrude this. Whoops. I can hit extrude, and I only want to extrude it in the Z axis. So I'm going to hit E, and then I'm going to hit the Z key. And that keeps me from going crooked, which is kind of nice. So now I've basically got <coughs> this... Um, hollow cylinder. And in actuality, you know what, probably could be easier. I, I started with a circle. You could do that or delete this. You could also, uh, there is a cylinder in the add mesh cylinder here um, that you can work on. Okay. Uh, so let me just raise that. So if I hit now, uh, I like keeping the orientation point. You can put it in the middle. It doesn't really matter. But you can scale things, you know, here or with the keys. So I'm going to scale this up like that. Let's make it the, uh, the thickness I want. And the real key to this, though, is going to be taking this object and making it look irregular. And that's really going to be the key for a lot of your objects. You know, you're making this... Um, look, right now it just looks like it's machine-made, it's man-made, right? We want to make it look like it's a natural object. So what we're going to do <coughs> is um, go into edit mode and using the loop cut and slide method, um, <coughs> I'm going to take my object here and I'm going to start modifying it to make it look a lot more uh, natural. So I'm going to take my loop, cut, and slide, and I'm just going to click, and I'm going to slide a bunch of segments up and down my, my object here. It's going to give me the ability to kind of manipulate this. And I am doing it rather randomly. That's, and I can always add more if I want to uh, as we go along. So nice and simple. And then I can take one of these and I can kind of bend it a little bit. And you can select a whole, uh, any line that goes around a circumference or something, if you select it with the Alt key held down, if you click right on the line, you'll see how it selects all the way around the object. That's very handy, by the way, for, for something like this. And so now my major concern is going to be kind of messing around with this a little bit to make it look a little bit less mechanical and, uh, and a little bit more natural. So before I go too much further, let's add our subsurface modifier on here so I can really see what it's going to look like. Okay. <clears throat> and you can see how the top is kind of looking a little rounder now. Okay. And I can do things right click there and I'll hit shift E for the edge just like I kind of showed you yesterday. We can break that ending, that end up too. Then the other things that I can start doing is I can start grabbing, actually just easier to go to face mode here. I can grab these two things here. And here's another neat thing that you can do is instead of 
Um, oh, you know why this isn't working well? <coughs> User preferences. Um, interface, rotate around selection. That's a very handy thing to have on. So now, as I go through this, you'll see it's going to rotate around whatever I've got selected. That makes things a lot easier. So now I can just grab this and pull it out. You see a little bit and create a bump. Okay. And you can kind of see how things are going to start working. And it's really just, it's, you can also hit the G key for grab. And then you can just kind of move it in certain directions. And as you continue working with this, you'll just realize how easy it is to just kind of create something that looks a little, you know, a little different. Let's say I wanted to create um, like a knob or a knot on here. So for instance, let's say uh, like there was a branch that had been cut off. That would be, you know, pretty easy to do. All I really need to do is grab... Um, Let's do another loop cut here, make it a little small, so I have a smaller section right here. Go back to my face mode, and I'm going to grab a bunch of these. And now I'm going to hit the E key and extrude them out uh, in the X. So I'll hit E, and then I'll hit X, and now I can only extrude it out. And now I can go to my Rotate tool, and I can actually start to rotate this. So it's starting to create a little bit of a bump. Now, <clears throat> because the subsurface modifier is working the way it is, it's really smoothing that out. So what I might want to do is I'm going to turn over, I'm going to turn that off for a second so that I can see my lines, my edges. And then I can just grab these edges, whoops, edge select mode. I can grab these edges here. Hold the shift key down. Once I get them all selected, I go back, turn the, the uh, subsurface modifier back on in the editing mode, and now I can hit shift E, and I can start to really, you know, decide how much of a, a smooth, how smooth I want that edge. And then I can do the same thing out here so that I can make it look like it was, um, it was, whoops, no. I hit, well, I hit control Z. That's why I did that. And now, there, okay. So now I can go, I didn't actually, I hit just the Z. So, um, so now I can select these edges here and change their crease. to kind of create maybe a sharper edge like it was cut off. And now, <clears throat> you might be thinking, okay, that's not looking, that looks, you know, not right. So I can do a loop cut here, like this, and then I can grab this edge here and move it out a little, see? Make it rounder. Okay. Now something weird is going on here, so let's take a look at this without the... Uh, Wondering if I have, you can go to wireframe mode by hitting the Z key, by the way. Ah, stop. I hate PCs. Um, <clears throat> and you can start to kind of take a look at what's going on. And it's really this point needs to be moved back just a tiny bit, like there. So sometimes wireframe mode helps, too. And then I can take, <sighs> I keep hitting the window key instead of the alt key. So now I can take this edge here and let's move that up. So hopefully what you're seeing here guys, I don't want to spend too much time more on this, but what I want you to see is how to start making a real object. Okay? Grab these, move these down a little bit. Grab these, move all of them up, and in a tiny bit. And so now if I turn the subsurf modifier back on, it actually looks like there's kind of a, a branch that was chopped off there. Okay, and if you just keep going through your object and you just keep making it um, and modifying it to look irregular like that, just pushing and pulling certain vertices and faces, once we put the texture on, 
which I'll do as a completely different demo. But once we put the wooden texture on there, it'll actually look like a real log. I mean, and it will look really, really good. So that's basically just a real quick, you know, 10-minute deal on how you can start making a log. Rocks are the same way. The big, the big thing to remember here is this. Number one, loop, cut, and slide is one of your best friends when it comes to editing if you want to add more vertices. And it's better than, than um, subdivision. You can subdivide a, uh, a face, but that usually gives you too many extra vertices. So what you usually want to do is you usually want to just do a loop, cut, and slide. Not always, but I, I've found that as I've done this, loop, cut is better. Um, the second thing is pushing and pulling. You can select faces, vertices, and edges. So think about which one you might want to use to move things. And then lastly, you want to make this look random. You want to make it look natural. You want to make it look like some guy cut it with a hatchet as opposed to being milled in a lumber mill probably, right? I mean, I guess maybe not. It depends on your, on your game. But a lot of you guys have games where you're in the wilderness or something like that, and this is a log uh, or something natural. You don't want it to look like it just came out of a lumber mill and it's perfectly square. Okay, so really think about how these things are supposed to look in your game. Does this make sense to everybody? All right, let's, let's, uh, let's get to work here.